Uh, welcome back to ProV Mans in collaboration with FO Mans Solutions. Today is yet another day, and we would like to take integer functions, and it's also part of the basic computations and calculus that we need. So, as we do, just take it on, nail it. Yeah. And um, so today we're going to take integer functions. Now, integer functions are basically functions whose values are integers, that is, negative and positive whole numbers. We don't use decimal numbers, or when we have decimal numbers, integer functions reduces them to integers alone. So how do we do that? We try to see that, and we have two types of integer functions. The first one is what we call the greatest integer functions and the second one is what we call the least integer functions. So let's start with the greatest integer functions. Now, let's take an illustration to explain what we mean by a greater integer function. Assuming we have a number line, a short number line here, let's say we have a value which is A here and a value which is B here, whereby A is lesser than B. And we have a value, let's say X, and X is the value which have been given. We want to use that value x to define what the greatest integer function is. Now the greatest integer function is the least whole number that is greater than the number which we are dealing with. Or in other words, we say the greatest integer function deals with the greatest integer or the greatest number which is actually less or equal to x which we are talking about here. So to illustrate this, let's say when we take a and b in respect to x, we can see that a is what? Lesser than x and x is also what? Lesser than b. So we can say b is greater than x, a is lesser than x. So if x is, let's say, a number which is in between a and b, okay, and we want to find the greatest integer function, we want to find the greatest number which is less or equal to x. Here, the greatest number which is less or equal to x is a. You can see that a is less than x, okay? Is less than x, but we can get other numbers also on the plane which are all less than x. Let's place maybe C, E, D. They are all less than x, but it is a that is greatest among the rest, which are all less than x, but a is the greatest among them. So we are talking about a. So we convert x to what a. So when we talk about greatest integer function of x here in between a and b, we are actually picking a. And we denote this by this symbol here. It's just like um, an absolute x within a square bracket. So when we place x in between a and b, the value of x becomes what? a using this particular number line when we restrict ourselves to a and b. So we can have a graph for a greatest integer function. Okay, let's take some example. Assuming you have this number, find the greatest integer function for 4.8. What will you do? Now, using this kind of number line, we first ask ourselves, when I have a number line, I need two values at the extreme, and my x, which is 4.8, is here. 
So I have 4.8 here. What are the whole numbers in front of A and behind it? So I know that I have 3 here and I have, sorry, I'll have 4 here because we have 4.8. I have 4 here and I have 5 here. So 4.81 or 4.8 is in between 4 and 5. But we are finding the greatest integer function. The greatest number but less or equal to 4.8. So we move back to what 4. So my greatest integer function for 4.8 is what? Actually 4. Because 4.8 is in between 4 and 5. And the greatest value which is less or equal to 4.5 is actually 4 like we represented here. Also when we have let's say a negative number the greatest integer function for negative 0 0.5 what will my value be? don't forget we can still use the number line here we draw a short number line let's place our value negative 0 0.5 here Negative 0 0.5 is actually in between negative 1 and 0. Negative half is in between 0 and negative 1. And from our greatest integer function, we want the greatest least and equal to negative 0 0.5. So we move a step backwards, which falls on negative 1. So our value for Greatest integer function for negative 0 0.5 is what? Negative 1. So as simple as that, we can explain the concept of what? Greatest integer function. Let's take a graph of greatest integer function. So when I have A and B as the extreme, any function that falls between A and B we refer all of them to what? A. So it gives us a particular graph or function. So assuming we have this function on this graph, starting from 0, minus 1, negative 1, we have 1, we have 2, we have 3. If we pick 0, 0 is on its own, it's an integer, so 0 will still be a 0, but when we pick 1, 1 is also an integer, so 1 is still 1, but any number between 0 and 1, we refer our down to 0, so from here, if a number is here, it will still be 0 here, it will still be 0 here, it will still be 0, but when it is exactly on 1, 1 is an integer, so for 1, it will fall on 1 exactly. So all the numbers here will fall on the 0 line, except exactly on 1. So we create a whole here, that means 1 itself is in part, but 1 gives us 1. Now when we come between 1 and 2, all the numbers that fall within this region will be referred back to what? 1, except 2. 2 we refer to what? 2 itself. So we have all of them here being equal to 1. But we have the one line here. So we bring it here and end it with a circle, which means 2 itself is not part. From 2 to 3, 2, you know that all the values in between 2 and 3 will fall back to 2, except what? 3 itself. So it moves in that direction. When we come down to all values within 0 and negative 1, we fall under negative 1, except 0 itself. So in that way, we keep extending the graph. So this is a graph of what? A greatest integer function.